Okay, so we're ready to go. Uh, welcome to everyone this evening uh, for the uh, March uh, session of the Committee of Adjustment for Tecumseh. Um, I've got to find that agenda again, hang on. <laughs> anyway, that's not it. I cannot do this with one. I give up. So um, welcome everybody to the meeting and uh, note who's here. Donna. Yeah. Um, Laurie is absent. Okay. So that's noted. Is there any disclosure of interest for this meeting? No. Daniel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the applicant and as a member of this committee, I will be disclosing a conflict of interest and therefore I will not be speaking in regards to this application this evening. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, and with you is? My apologies, Mr. Chair. Uh, speaking on our behalf will be my wife, Karen Curry. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the zoo. <laughs> uh, okay. Minutes were pre-circulated. Anybody want to make a motion on the minutes? Uh, Tom and Paul? Any addition, deletion, correction? All in favor? Opposed, carried. Okay. So we only have the one application this evening, as you know. And uh, so Donna, could you read it? Application for minor variance A0922, Daniel Hofgardner, 12650 Riverside Drive. The purpose of the application is to request relief from the following subsections of zoning bylaw 1746. Subsection 5.25.1G, which establishes that accessory structures shall not be located within 1.5 meters, 4.92 feet of the main building. Subsection 5.25.4I, which establishes that no accessory structure shall be located closer than 2.5, 8.2 feet to the side lot line. And subsection 5.254, triple I, which establishes that one accessory building is permitted in the rear yard with a maximum ground floor area of 9.3 square meters, 100.1 square feet, and a maximum height of 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet. The applicant is requesting relief to allow 27.4 square meter, 295 square foot, 3.3 meter, 10.83 feet, high sloped roof over an existing patio approximately one inch from the main dwelling and 0.6 meters two feet from the easterly side lot line as depicted on the attached sketch. The applicant is also proposing automatic screens on the north, east and westerly sides of the proposed addition. The subject property is designated residential in the Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R1 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. No concerns from engineering, no comments from building, no comments from fire, no concerns from Essex power lines. And the following is received from Essex Region Conservation Authority. The above noted lands are subject to our development interface in wetlands and alteration alterations to shorelines and watercourses regulations under the Conservation Authorities Act, Ontario Regulation 15806. The parcel falls within the regulated area of Lake St. Clair. The property owner will be required to obtain a permit from Essex Region Conservation Authority prior to any construction or site alteration or other expected activities by Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Secondly, of the resident at 12654 Riverside Drive, the owner of uh, said Riverside Drive uh, abuts the subject property to the east, has submitted his opposition to the applications 
due to the following reason. The proposed accessory building 10 by 29.5 by 1010 high with a 290 foot square footprint is different than the shown on the drawing of 182 square feet would be constructed six feet north of his house from the north wall of the screened walls. On the west wall of my house, I have a three foot, four inch, six foot, eight inch living area window, which provides a view from the kitchen, dining area, living room and bar area. This window is located two feet, three inches from the house north wall, see attached photos. From the information supplied by the application, the proposed accessory building will block the view from the living area window. The property owner has advised that he is in attendance tonight and wishes to speak in opposition of the application. In addition, um, the sketch for AO922 uh, regarding 12650 Riverside Drive uh, was signed by uh, Tara Levac at 12702 Riverside Drive and by the resident uh, Philae Sternbauer at 12640 Riverside Drive. That's it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, Donna. Um, at this point in the meeting, I usually ask the applicant if they have any comments. So okay. uh, any addition that the uh, committee might need to consider? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to thank the uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members uh, for listening to, to me. Um, regarding our proposal, uh, we took the time to research what we could do with IRCA, hence the reason for not being attached to our house and built as an accessory structure, not meeting the requirement to be 1.5 meters away. We have lived here for 19 years and find the existing patio unusable at evenings because of the direct west sun. The covered patio and screen on the west side would alleviate this. Our neighbor directly west uh, sits a lot higher grade than our home and has no issues with the proposal having signed off on the drawings submitted. The retractable screens on three sides would only be used on rare occasion in the evening when bugs are out at full force. Our house was built approximately in 1945 and therefore was built too close to the current property line. However, the house to the east is 16 foot six inches away and is also built six feet closer to the water than our house. The neighbor to our east had originally approved our concept and drawing and signed a statement to effect in December, but has since reversed his decision. We were not made aware of this until past this, just but this past Friday and 10 days after we had submitted our application. Our proposal does not affect his view to the Lake Northerly. If a side window on his house is to be considered obstructing his view, then all homes on the lake would have an obstructed, an, an obstructed view, including our home after he built a new two-story home, at which time we did not oppose his variance of, obstruct, of obstructing our northerly and easterly views. The size of our patio and proposal is modest in size and we feel does not negatively affect our neighbor's enjoyment of their property. Thank you respectively, submitted by Karen Curry and Daniel Hofgartner. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, committee, oh, Mr. Cope, I guess uh, you have some comments you'd like to make, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, you know, uh, Karen and Daniel are, are really good neighbors and this is nothing personal. Uh, I just wanna, just wanna make that very clear. Um, so the view from my easterly window, um, which I use mostly, I, I guess I get the most enjoyment during the winter months that I've realized. And I get a panoramic view, you know, of Peach Island, uh, the Michigan shoreline, the North shore of Lake St. Clair. And um, it, it's a very nice panoramic, panoramic view. Um, I, I think that, you know, the neighbor's proposed structure will impact that. 
And, you know, that that's my concern. Um, you know, I think living on the water, it's all about the view. And, and uh, that's why I moved here and, and you know, built my home. Um, I, you know, in the beginning, I was, you know, kind of on the fence. And the more I thought about it, and, and as the winter months went on, I realized that, you know, from my bar and from my kitchen island, I, you know, I, I do, you know, enjoy that view. So the accessory building, and to some extent, will will impact that. Now we haven't talked about, you know, is there something we can do to compromise in terms of of um, their structure and, and the view that I'm concerned about? But um, you know, that's the position I have currently. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, probably the committee's opportunity now to ask some questions if they want. Can I just say one more thing? Um, no or okay. no. Oh, yeah, well, I, just regarding Mr. Cope's um, email, I just wanted to correct a couple of inaccuracies in his statement. Um, the, the footprint is, it is 182 square feet past the existing building line. He's stating it's 295. If you look at the drawing, the, the gray shaded area is what, we're discussing here um, that is past the existing building line, which is 182 square feet. And also um, his how uh, the, um, the house would, the structure would be constructed four feet, not six feet um, beyond his house. Okay. I just wanted to say that. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's okay, that's good. You clear up clear up something there. Um, committee members, Tom, your mic is on, off, on rather. On, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, through you and to the applicant, uh, Karen, thank you for clarifying that square foot uh, question that Mr. Cope had. That was, uh, that was one of my questions. So I, I think we've, um, satisfied that it is 182 square feet that we're talking about here. Um, I was at the property. Um, I, I took a look at the sight lines um, and the pictures demonstrate that, you know, there is already an obstruction for an easterly view. Uh, there's a big tree in the way. Um, there's, there's a lot of vegetation, at least to the post of that middle window uh, as shown in the pictures. I don't know if, Chad, you can show those pictures. So not really, not really that one, but the, the one from the table, I guess. Sorry, uh, through Mr. Chair, Tom, you're, you're referring to the, the pictures submitted with the application that the committee received? I, I oh, believe so. There was a three pictures. The one that shows um, the two windows side by side. No, this, this, this isn't what you're referring to? So there's one more, well, I mean, so that is, you know, if you're in the house, I'm not sure which is the bar that Mr. Cope is talking about, but uh, there was another picture that shows the porch. Yeah, and then there's mm -hmm. one more. So that, that kind of shows the east view um, as I understand, the posts are going to be basically where those square pots are there. And the height will be uh, exactly what that 
balcony, current balcony is. So if you round that out, that's basically um, what you would see as an obstruction, uh, at least for the physical components, not the screens. Um, so in the background, there's lots of trees. There's already somewhat of an obscured view. Um, can, uh, what tree, can I ask a question? Um, who? The, the westerly view, do we have that as well? Yes, uh, give, me, give me one second to, to get the, that was, uh, those photos for you. You just want to get on camera, Chad. Just bear with me, please, thanks. Well, Mr. Chair, that is the westerly view, all of those photos. Yes, yeah, he's looking You're for- right, I'm- okay. He's looking east, for east. East facing. Yes. So just, Mr. Chair, if you give me a couple of minutes to, to find the original application that contained those photos, I'll get that. If there are other questions that can be asked in the, in the meantime. Sure. Okay. Uh, Tony or Paul, <clears throat> you have questions? Mike, Tony. Go ahead, Paul. I'll let you go first. Okay. okay um, I guess my question would be either for the applicant or administration. What is the purpose of keeping it one inch away from the main structure? Is this being an ERCA requirement? Because if this was attached to the main structure, then some of these um, item number one on the variance application wouldn't apply. And item three, I guess, wouldn't apply either, would it? That's that's correct. Um, so the reason for the one inch is to, um, from Erica's perspective, is to qualify it as an accessory structure. Uh, and without that, they are unable to, to issue a permit. And I, I believe it's uh, due to uh, the, the risk of damage to the structure if it's attached to the dwelling and then damage to the existing dwelling as well. Um, Mr. Hofgartner met with, with Erka, he may be able to elaborate a bit on that. Um, but the, from the bylaw perspective, because it's not attached to the dwelling, it's not considered accessory any longer. Uh, and it's part, uh, it, sorry, it's because it's not attached, it's considered accessory. And therefore the technical relief that's that needs to be requested is for, um, or is from the accessory provisions of the bylaw that you see in the notice. If this was connected to the building, um, the provisions that would apply would be the, the sight line provision. And that's why the sketch shows that red line um, here. The, the green line, which represents the line of sight. The midpoint of the addition can't be beyond that. And that's why they're showing 6.2 because originally this was treated as an addition, but because it's one inch from the dwelling, it's considered an accessory structure. The other, uh, the other bit of relief that would be necessary would be the Northeast corner of the structure, which is two feet from the lot line. Uh, and that would have to be um, the, the 1.4 meters from, from the uh, easterly lot line, not 2.5 that's required for accessory structures. But again, because this is considered accessory, those three areas of relief are, are being requested. Can I help, Tony? That helps, thank you. <laughs> okay, Paul?
uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this is a, a question for Chad. Um, our sight lines, uh, we're, we're using the sight lines from the rear of the building, is, isn't that correct? And not uh, per se windows, or this is all due to, or all acts on the rear of the buildings. Is that correct? Sorry, uh, Mr. Jobin, can you please just repeat that question so I fully understand it? So I'm sure I've got, got it correct. You're on, you're on mute. Um, well. Um, we're just talking about sight lines uh, through windows and whatnot. And I'm just wondering uh, the site, uh, like the site, the line site that we're going through is from the rear of the houses. Isn't that correct? That's yeah, tr traditionally that has been the impact that has been assessed primarily from the, the outdoor area. Uh, and, and not the window. Uh, in, in this case, uh, there was a decision to, you know, according to the uh, neighbor to the east, um, who's objecting that there was a decision to construct that window in that location to provide that view. So um, the official plan simply states that the protection of existing views will be, you know, upheld. Okay, thank you. Okay, Tom. So just building on that point, it's, it's a good point actually that Paul brings up. Um, the, the consideration for the, for the views based on projecting from the corner of the house is really where the point of view should be. Could you make that argument? I mean, is that, is that the intent of the of the bylaw? I mean, if if the neighbor had a complaint because he had a bathroom window at the front of his house, is that a valid complaint? I mean, not to split hairs, but I mean, I think we're trying and, to be uh, reasonable. Maybe maybe we can. I think we're getting into an area where I always had trouble with this with this uh, provision in there in the bylaw that we inherited from St. Clair Beach I'm not sure if Tecumseh had it or if they just they just uh, added it to theirs because it was there in St. Clair Beach but in fact way back when the St. Clair founding fathers whatever decided to have this provision I think the purpose of it was to prevent um, to be to prevent gradual erosion of of the space along the shoreline by every one someone want to put their house out a little farther so they get a little better view and then the next guy come along and said well, I'm going to put an addition out so I can see beyond his view and so on right uh, is that a fair assessment of why the bylaw was was uh, created and it wasn't such a fine point about whether you could see the tree or whether you could see the Penobscot building or whatever. Chair, if you're, you're asking me, I, I would agree with that assessment of the, of the, of the bylaw. I believe that's the, the intent. The primary intent is, is just that. And in the, uh, in the applications that we've had so far, this would be the, I think, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, the first one where we're looking for views from inside the house. Except maybe second floor view on a balcony one time. That's correct, Mr. Chair. There, there was an argument about a view from the second floor with one with respect to one of the applications. Yeah. So the question is, and I guess in order to set to uh, solve this problem, it's a question we're going to have to answer. We've been, the committee has been, although um, um, Previous rulings is not supposed to help us or hinder us in terms of this ruling. Every, every situation is um, looked at as if it's brand new by itself, never happened before, never will happen again. Um, that that uh, in the past, few uh, applications that involved a, a, a balcony or a cover or a, a whatever of a patio at, at the rear of the house like this. 
um, we were a little bit more lenient about the patio. But if I correct me if I'm wrong, we've been fairly strict about um, putting sides on that patio. So there's really two issues here. One, one can the extension out into the backyard of the roof or the or the patio roof. Uh, that's one thing that we need to consider. And then the second one would be, if we do allow that, can it have screens on it? And, uh, and we've decided sort of gently in the one side, on the one situation, we've been fairly strict on the other. So uh, committee wants to think about that in those terms and have any more questions, that would be good. Mr. Chair. I, just, I yep. want to let you know that I do have the, the pictures that show um, the sort of the view from, from the proponent's property toward the, the westerly property. If you look okay, that's how. Bear with me. I do have them. You, you can see the, this is looking west. You can see the vegetation along the westerly lot line. Mr. Meritad, is that, are those no, the photos? No, that that, that's good. Yep, thank you, thank you. I just wanted to clarify the two views. So, so uh, whether that vegetation interferes with the view that the founding fathers were considering, or were they just thinking about view of the shoreline and the lake? Like, um, if you even if those trees weren't there, you still wouldn't be seeing the lake. You might be able to see the Detroit skyline, right? Do you want me to share them once one more time? Yeah, Mr. Chair. The, the one, the one, yeah. <clears throat> no, and I'm not that one somewhat, but that one in particular. Uh, the tallest tree in the background is about on the edge of the lake, I think. Looks like anyway. Now that picture is from where though? Is that from inside or outside the Easterly House? Mr. Chair, these were provided by the applicants. Perhaps the so applicants they're probably from that. outside. Uh, can the Huff, if the Huffgangers provided them, can they tell us where, what the point of view was from? Oh, this is standing um, with our back to, I guess, his house facing west. So kind of on the edge of where the patio would be, just, just before the patio. On the, I'm sorry, on the edge of? So you can see the, um, the white post closest to you. Yeah. So that's, that's the edge of where the pad, pretty much where the patio would Oh, sorry. That's the middle of the patio. So sorry. It's 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 a little bit closer in, but we're standing on the patio, facing oh, okay. west. Yeah. And where where are you in relation to the to the house that's behind you? Edge. Well, we're on the edge of the patio. His house is directly behind. If you were standing there, I'm taking the photo. His house is directly behind me. The front, the the back wall of his house. Yeah, his uh, his west wall. Okay. Uh, committee. So now you can yeah, where where the whoever's doing the arrows standing there yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
Any other questions from the committee? So if, if we can just go back to that point through you, Mr. Chair, um, to that picture of the window, we can establish that from the midpoint of the second window. Chair? You're gonna be really good at it when we're done. <laughs> so that picture there, you know, really establishes that at least the three quarter point of the of the the second window, the second pane of that window. Um, really, if you take a point from where those docks intersect the shoreline, and then it's trees south of that, which is really obstructed. Um, and if you drew a vertical line, you're probably, I don't know, eight inches beyond south of the of the first post there on the east lot line. So I'm not, you know. Um, okay, are you, are you considering, uh, Tom, in your questions, are you considering uh, just the roof line of extended I, out? I'm or considering, are you considering the screens. I'm considering the post and the roof line at this point. Okay. Now, there again, now, if you had screens, uh, the point at which, if you drop that vertical line, you're really not. You're not screening any view. What is that right where the arrow is at, sitting at? Is that a pile of dirt or something? Yeah. Anybody know what that can is? I make, can I make a comment, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. Okay, so that, yeah, that they're currently building a house uh, oh, okay. on that property and that is a pile of dirt but i but i think we're focusing on one particular view if you you know that's next to the window if you sit back from my bar or or perhaps from my island um so i'm you know i'm, I'm just concerned that the structure will you know um impact that view like of Peach Island, I, I I will lose the view. I I I think I'll lose that total view of well, Peach Island. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yep. Um, just to that point, and 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 on that photograph there, um, the intersection of the shoreline, uh, that tree. I, I'm not sure that you would see very much of the of the deck from this view. That's, see that tree is on a bit of an angle. If you go to the other picture, maybe we can establish where that is. So that tree is behind the pillar of the window. And, and I think we've established that the, that the deck, the proposed structure is just going to be short of the pillar of that window. Yeah. So I'm not uh, entirely sure that there's... Okay, so, so we're getting back to uh, the view and what, what's, what's the purpose of the original uh, meaning of this bylaw? Was it to prevent creeping encroachment on the shoreline? Or was it meant that if you happen to have a window in the sidewall of your house that you can't go anywhere near that? Um, so I don't know. 
I don't know the answer. I just know the question, <laughs> unfortunately. That bylaw has been around for a long time. Eh? Um, just a question to the neighbor through your chair. Um, Mr. Cope, yeah. Did you, did you have occasion to speak with the, the applicant and maybe erect a facade structure to kind of demonstrate the effect on your site? Well, we, we tried with a, uh, um, um, I, I did have a meeting with the neighbors and um, around PVC pipe, we tried, we tried to place it, you know, where we thought um, the structure would be and, you know, try to determine the impact of the view that way. But it was an only, it's, it's an eight foot piece of pipe. And I understand that, um, you know, the structure is almost 11 feet. So it, it's pretty hard to determine unless you actually construct something like that's going to replicate what the structure is going to be. I, 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 like carrying a pipe around, I don't think is going to do you any justice in terms of determining the impact of the view by the new structure. And, and based on the view that we're looking at on the screen, right? where do you believe the post? Well, I think it's gonna go like, so to me, I think, so if you look at the top of the, the top portion of the gray there, right? And you go across and probably, I'm gonna say, if you go beyond the mullion of the window to, to an extent, um, and again, um, slightly beyond that, I think that's where you're going to, you're going to lie, but you got to keep in mind that depending on where you are in the house, so my bar sits back further so that the angle of the view is much different. And I, and I didn't take one. Um, it's, it's so as you, you know, walk in the living space, the view is affected differently. Could I ask you, is your north wall a, a complete glass wall? Look, it appears to be. Uh, yes, it is. That would be a nice view. And one more question, Mr. Chair, to the uh, neighbor there, yep. Um, yep. Mr. Cope. Where, where in this view do you believe that the post is going to be? I would say... I'm going to say beyond the mullion, beyond the, uh, um, I would say, I don't know, maybe a quarter way past it, if I was to guess, something like that, in that area, yeah. And I would say you'd lose probably, you know, if you're standing or sitting, again, it impacts your view. If you're sitting, then it, you know, it would, it could be a third from the top of the window. Let's say something like that, realistically. Well, I mean, with, without cutting hairs, I'm, I'm just, I, I thought we had established that that leaning tree was behind the mullion on the last picture, which would. Well, so it depends. So, so I think you have to keep in mind where, like, where are you standing inside my house when you're trying to figure out that view? Because that'll make a difference. If you're standing in front of the window, then of course it's going to change. I mean, it's, it depends on the angle. Okay. Uh, Paul? You look like you're mulling over a question there. Um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, fortunately, uh, there is a north wa wall that's got a lot of windows. Uh, unfortunately, is that there is a window that's gonna, that is making us uh, think about this decision, whether we um, uh, approve this uh, permit or not. Um, but if there was uh, the east, uh, I'm not sure if that's, uh, I would think that's the west wall of uh, the gentleman's, uh, Mr. Cope's house. If the wall was all glass, it would be, you know, another, uh, a problem again. But like, 
uh, where where do you where do we stop with uh, windows and you know what I mean like where if we're gonna start we'll go with the the rear of the house and judge the rear of the house for our eyesight do we use windows and if the window is midway through the house uh, do we use that window you know so. Um, Unfortunately, there's a window there, and he's got a view. And I mean, I'm looking at a window behind him right now, and I see a house and the window behind him. Um, but uh, I, unfortunately, it's um, you know there is a window and it is a nice view. Uh, but I, I still think you'll still see a lot of that view um, with uh, this structure. Um, but I, I'm my question is, is where we. Where are, are we going to, as a committee, start the, the line of sight? Um, I guess that's what we got to go with. Mr. Cope, would, are you uh, more concerned about just curtains to screens than the actual extension of the roof? Um. To be honest, I haven't thought about that. Um, I think screens make it more of a permanent structure. I think that's my first thought. Um, will the screens really impact the view that I'm talking about? I think it's more of the, more of the patio structure. And again, I'm, I'm not sure what you know Karen and Daniel have in mind is, can they set that patio back somewhat? You know, I mean, is there some sort of a compromise? Is there, you know, a way of maybe looking at this differently? Um, yeah. I really don't want to get into a discussion like that at this point, I don't think. Um, but I hear you say that you haven't considered what it might be like if it didn't have the screens on the side. You keep you continue to talk about a structure, correct? And the structure is a couple, it's a couple of a couple of uh, three poles, I guess, or two or three poles, and and an and an awning or a roof, small roof structure on top of it. So, uh, can you visualize the impact that that would have? without the screens? Well, I think obviously it would improve the view somewhat. I mean, I mean, it would be, you'd be able to look above and below that structure. Yeah. If you're, you know, looking through, you know, the window at that point. Yeah. I know, I know what fish flies are like along there. So I know why, why they'd like to have the screens for sure. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. So, um, oh, yeah. is that Ed? Are you done? Uh, yeah, I, I think you know. I just think that you know um, whether there's screens or not. I don't know if that really makes. I mean, I mean, you know, obviously the screens are down, then you're getting more of this. Uh, you know, the view would be blocked more. Um, but again, you know, they're all going to be used occasionally. So it's not, I don't think it's a hugely determining factor for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Jerry. Okay. So I just wanted to explain a little bit more about the use of the screens. They really are honestly just for the bugs and they usually come out at dusk. So we're talking, utilizing those in the evening. So at this point, there really isn't a obstructing Mr. Cope's view of pet whatever you could see what's left of Pesh Island after with all the trees being in full bloom. And also the screens that we're looking at are gonna be as transparent as possible because you know we don't wanna obstruct any of our view too. I mean, we, want, we love the view and, and you know, so we're, gonna, we're trying to alleviate things to make it look as light and airy as possible. The posts are going to be white, just a white standing seam roof line, very simple, nothing heavy, obtrusive. You know, we're trying to make this look modern and 
it's really just to enjoy our footprint, which isn't really large and to make it smaller would be useless to us. So, I mean, right now is it's the perfect size without, it could be bigger, but we don't want to do that. So I'm just, you know, we're just trying to, since COVID started, you know, we found in the last two years using our backyard more. And that's when we thought we couldn't even sit out to have, you know, our dinners. It was so hot with the westerly sun. So we'd bring the screen down, the west screen down at dinner time, but leave it all open. And then at, in the evening when the bugs did come full force, that's when they might come down if we're outside using it. So they wouldn't be down all the time. You know, they'd be up most of the time. So I just wanted to stress that. And then talking about windows and where you stand, I mean, again, like I mentioned earlier, we did, you know, allow Mr. Cope to extend past our property. And um, in doing that, you know, it, it, it has affected our view. When I stand, like where I'm sitting now, I'm looking to the, to the east and it's blocking what I used to be able to see. And he's also added a porch to it, which I don't know if that's even on the original, his original drawings, but he's got posts now that obstruct our view. I'm not, and I'm not complaining about it. You know, I'm just really hoping that Ed, that, you know, that you could come around and, and, and see that, you know, it's, you've got the beautiful back glass view like we do. And, and that's what we utilize is that main big glass view, not the little side windows or whatnot. And, and that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. To well, committee, what do you think? We've got enough, or do you have a couple more questions, or what are we going to do? Chris, just two questions, if I can, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, the roof proposed roof structure. How I'm trying to visualize how how thick of a roof structure we're referencing here, and and, and confirming that. There's not, this is purely a roof. This isn't a floor for something above. I know uh, Mr. Cope mentioned when we discussed screens, he said he'd be able to see above and below. As to my understanding, you could still see above the roof. There's nothing proposed on top of the roof, but I'm also trying to get an idea of, is this a, a six inch thick kind of roof structure? Is it only a few? I just, how visually impactful the, the roof's thickness would be. I did supply a side elevation, so I'm okay. not sure if it's on it. that is is it fabric or is it wood um, that would probably be a like white um, standing seam white metal uh, flashing and then the uh -huh. poles are six by six finished with a white same material okay. So if I'm reading that correctly, the roof structure at its widest would be 21 inches tall. If that difference is 90 from 114 to 93. Yes. To the highest point and then yeah, yeah sloping down for snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my second question just pertains to something that was stated earlier. Can, can it be confirmed how far beyond um, Mr. Cope's property this, this um, enclosed area would extend? I think it was stated it was two feet. I just want to confirm from, from his north wall uh, how far the actual, um, yeah, from the north wall of his property to the extension here. It was stated it was two feet. I just wanted to make sure. Four feet, that. four feet. Two, two feet is the, the sight line, but the, if you, the, the, uh, property line. the property line, sorry, but four feet from the corner of his, his northwest corner of his house to the edge out to where our pole post would be is um, four feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I misunderstood that earlier. So thank you for clarifying. Okay, Chris. Yeah, that's the only question I have. Thank you. Okay, you're good. Thanks. Um, why I can't? I've got a small window for the. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Um, so. Now what, guys? Help me. Tom? Mr. Chair, um, I appreciate we've heard from the applicants and, and, and the neighbor and the, the 
questions were very good. The discussion was good. The pictures were good. And yet these decisions are always difficult. Um, I realize that they're, you know, beautiful views. Um, and that's the reason that people are attracted to the lake. Um, and it is, as you said, these matters are always, uh, you know, noted as the race to the lake. And um, we've, we've seen other discussion and, um, and the decisions just don't seem to get any easier. Um, I, I can appreciate that the pictures that, that the applicant and, and the neighbor have provided. Um, and I appreciate the explanations that we've heard from the neighbor uh, on his objection. His objection really is the structure, not so much the screens, which the applicant uh, has put in his application. Um, so I haven't really seen any objection to the use of screens. And the applicant has have noted that, you know, it would be a limited use thing anyhow in the evening when, when it's dark out, the views are diminished. Um, I think in my mind from, from the, the views that I've seen through the pictures that, that the, the neighbor provided, I, I just, I don't see that it's going to uh, diminish the views um, to the extent where it's gonna make a lot of difference. Yes, you will see the structure, um, but I don't think it's going to totally cut off a view. There are uh, two windows and it, it goes back to the, what if there was three windows? Would we be talking about the third window? Um, again, I, I'm not sure that there's any perfect answer but I think that you know the neighbors have had a chance to, to discuss their arguments and 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 the project, and um, there was a change of mind, which is fine. That's that's uh, that's their right. Um, but I just don't see that that the view is going to be obstructed to the point where it's unreasonable. So for that reason, uh, I would move to approve the application and um, uh, as I think it does meet the four tests. I think it's, it is, is reasonable. It's um, a good use and uh, that's it. Seconder. Oh. Um. The only question I have is the uh, applicants have, have indicated that their intent is to use the screens as little as possible and quite possibly more in the evening after dusk or at dusk. Uh, yes, correct. Chad, is there any way to put a provision on the, on the uh, I'm not sure how we do it, but <laughs> can you help? A provision that I don't, know, I don't know how you could make it effective because because they may get tired of that house and and move out <laughs> and the next person will come and they'll put the screens down and leave them down so um, are we leaving ourselves a problem if we do that just a question we have a motion so we can go with that So, um, Mr. Chair, you're, you're asking if, um, you know, if, if there's a possibility to impose time limits on the screens. Yeah, or to wait, a way to regulate that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not familiar with um, a condition that uh, sort of imposes a time constraint on, on a building element like that. Mm. And I think it would be very difficult to Police to, to enforce, right? Um, yeah. And and I haven't given that enough thought to you know, to provide the committee with you know, 
Uh, okay, I thought maybe, maybe, how to do that. maybe in your experience you had seen it, that's all. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen. Um, okay. As far as I can remember, I haven't seen a time limit. Always on. All right, so any more questions? Okay, I'll call the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Cope, for attending and giving your, your viewpoint. And you did a good job, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And Daniel, you got to take her out to dinner. She did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have anything? We have our, oh, one question that's coming up quite often. And I experienced a committee of adjustment meeting in Lakeshore this way. And it's made me sensitive to making sure that I, I let everyone speak. You probably noticed that. Um, but are we going to go back to in camera anytime soon or in, uh, in, the, in the building anytime soon? Mr. Chair, I think that is on, on the horizon. I mean, there's discussions, but I, I can't give a specific date. Okay. All right. And nothing on, uh, nothing on a Christmas party. Eh? Not yet, but I'll have something about, for you shortly. How about an Easter party? Anyway. All right. Uh, I guess we can adjourn if someone wants to make a motion to adjourn, please. Uh, Tony and Chris, all in favor? Okay, we're adjourned. So the recording.